Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus chapter 2. There went a man of the house of Levi, it's the sons of Levi, and took a wife, daughter, took a wife, a daughter of Levi. So he's a Levite, and he marries in the Levite tribe. There's no priest yet. So this is not the priest class. The Levites. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child. Now according to Stephen Acts chapter 7. He says a fair child. She hid him three months. And you'll see this in Acts 7 20 through 28. Three months she hides her son. And he's not given a name. It's almost like they... Kind of think that this child is not going to survive. Because if you remember the previous chapter. They're killing the male, male children. And it looks like that. This, we're not going to give him a name. Because he doesn't have a name. You can't call him Moses. That's not his name. It looks like his mother. Slipped through the. The, uh, um, the midwives. Almost making. Chapter 1 verse 19. True statement. Before the midwives even came. But. And when she could not longer hide him, she took him an ark of bulrushes, and many know this story, and daubed it with slime and with pitch, waterproof in it. She knows what she's going to do. And yet, Verse 22 of chapter 1, And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river. She's going to go put her son where they're killing the babies. And yet she's making this thing waterproof. And we don't know if she's doing this by her own or God is leading her. And put the child therein, and she laid it in the flags, that's the kind of plants, by the river's brink. And what a sad story for a mother to have to do for her child. His sister, okay, he has a sister, stood afar off. To wit, that means to know what happened. What would be done to him, her brother? What's going to happen to her brother? Anybody know? We got to keep. And you got to wonder if the fact is that is God working with this woman that we are not seeing yet, or does his sister say, "Okay, mom's done it. Let me just watch my brother." What we've done to him. They don't want the child dead. She's protected the child. She has made a vessel where it will not sink. And I don't know if you, if you realize you are seeing a type of Noah's Ark. Here is a vessel. It's not made to go anywhere. It's just made to flow. And inside this vessel is life. And I believe Noah pitched his ark that would not sink. 
and she puts it in the weeds of the water. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I don't know how mighty the Nile River is. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. She's going down. This is her bathtub. It's her bath time. And her maidens walked along by the riverside. They're making sure no one's peeking. She's going to get naked and she's going to wash. We don't want anybody looking at the prince, princess. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. Something about this ark. Oh, what's that over there? Uh, talking to, you want to go get that for me? And when she had opened it, I only assume would have been the princess, she saw the child. And behold, okay, child, do it. The babe wept. I believe that's God. Who knows how long this child's been floating and he's not crying? He's three months old. And as soon as the maidens or the, the daughter of Pharaoh opened that thing up, God is like, okay, now do your thing. And he's crying and he's breaking a female's heart. Because it says, and she had compassion on him. Oh, isn't he cute? How do you know? And he said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. This is a woman whose father says, you kill them. And she's like, oh, he's so adorable. She is defying her father. In the very river where babies are probably floating down dead. And crocodiles, I don't mean to want to be sick, but they're very happy because they're being fed. And a crocodile is a god of Egypt. Do you realize what's going on here? Not only is a baby float in a river, not only is a woman taking a bath in a river, and not only is this baby inside a little uh, bassinet kind of thing, and woo, there may be other babies floating down the river dead, if not blood of the babies. And you have the daughter of the Pharaoh. You know she knows what's going on. And she is taken to this baby. She knows... It's a Hebrew. They know what a Hebrew is. And we already know Hebrews are an abomination to the Egyptians. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter. The baby sister, we know. Miriam, we know it later. Walks up to Pharaoh's daughter. You can't do that. You try walking up to uh, President, what's his name? Let me know his name. Trump, you try to walk up to President Trump's family and see how far you're going to get. Try to walk up to the Queen Elizabeth's family in England, see how far you're going to get. Try to walk up to whoever the Russian. You're not going to, and the thing is that we think, we think, that Miriam's also one of these maidens of Pharaoh's daughter. Remember, the girls were saved alive. They were saved. They were servants in the fields. They were servants making bricks. They were servants following the house. So Miriam walks up to Pharaoh's door and says, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women? Excuse me, your, your highness. You want me to go get a Hebrew woman to... To take care of that child that she may nurse the child for thee well look at that that baby has been adopted by Pharaoh's daughter and we'll get a child to nurse it for thee it's her child now that child is not going to be killed and wouldn't it be now come on let's read what we don't read in the Bible here wouldn't it be interesting when she comes home from the, to the palace that afternoon, here comes Dad, Pharaoh, 
um, you know, they, how's it going, honey? What's going on? Oh, I found this baby. Oh, really? Well, looks Hebrew to me. Oh, he is. He's a, he's a, he's, he's my son. Now, don't you think that didn't bring good tidings to the palace that night? Yeah, that baby's supposed to be born. You ain't touching my son. Get your grubby fingers off my son, your grandson. How about that? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. Go you all the world. And the maid went and called the child's mother. You couldn't plan this. You know that God's working on the scenes behind this one. The baby's found alive. The baby cries. It gets the heart of, of the daughter of Pharaoh. Miriam steps up to the bar. Well, let me go, let me find somebody to, to nurse that child for you. Yeah, okay. I can go get Jochebed, the baby's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take the child away and nurse it for me. It's her child. It's Jacobed's baby, but it's now Pharaoh's baby. I mean, the daughter of Pharaoh's baby. And I will give thee wages. <laughs> Welfare in the Bible. A woman's getting taken care of for taking care of her own baby. This child is marked. Now, You got to think about the other Jewish women now. Their male children are getting killed. Did you hear about Jochebed and her son? You believe that? Who she thinks she is? Now we got to wonder what Mary got in front of the people around her. Jew. She's never been with a man before. How does she have a baby? Who she thinks she is? You know, Sarah. You know how old Sarah is, and she's gonna have a baby. Elizabeth, you believe that? How old is Do you see the miracleness of the children of the line of the Jewish people that Satan hates? I'll give thee wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew. And she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. What's bringing the Pharaoh? Bringing the Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son. And she called his name, Pharaoh's daughter, called his name Moses, which is Egyptian for I drew. I drew him out of the Nile. The Nile is a god. Pharaoh is naming Moses after I got him from a god. God Nile, whatever they named it. That's what she's saying. Moses is not a Hebrew name. And she said, because I drew him out of the water. And there's the meaning. And the, the Hebrew is Masha, to draw out. I'm just trying to read a note here that... So what you got now is Moses. He's drawn out of the Nile River God. Now you got Moses who's a type of son of God. And Moses will say to be a prophet like it unto me. Yep. And he's water of life. Pharaoh didn't, I mean, Pharaoh's daughter didn't realize what she was naming her son. And he's not named unto Pharaoh names him. And like I said, the Nile River is a God. This boy, this baby is from God. And it's a miracle that Jochebed got her, got her son back. And it's a miracle that Mary would have her baby and nurse it and grow it. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown. Right. 10 and 11, there's a lot of years when we don't know anything about Moses in the early years, do we? 
We don't know anything about Jesus in the early years, but 13 years old. So we've gone from Joseph, a greatest type of Jesus Christ. Now we've gone to Moses, a great type of Jesus Christ, was grown. And he went out unto his brethren. Can I finish with another verse? And his brethren received them not. Well, guess what's going to happen here? His brethren are not going to receive him. Type of Jesus Christ. Come on, man. They knew who Jesus Christ was. They just didn't want to believe it. Because the Pharisees, the scribes, and the Sadducees were loving the fame, the fame of the people that even Pilate said it was envy. He gathered the crowds. He took the people away from them. He did things that they could not do. Nicodemus came to him, one of the ones that did believe it, said, we know who you are. We know. We just don't want to believe it. That's a side note. Came unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. They're just too hard work. Rigor. And he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew. Beating him. One of his brethren. John 1, I think it's 11. He came on his own. He's Jewish. Jesus ain't colored and he ain't Hollywood. He's brown. Many people are going to be shocked when they see the real Jesus. You know where Charlton has to. And he looked this way and that way. Ooh, uh, 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 look. Moses looked both ways. And people don't do that today. And when he saw that there was no man, there is intent in Moses' heart. He slew the Egyptian. He knew he was going to kill that man. He looked this way. He looked that way. Close is clear, they say. Bam! And hit him in the sand. He's going to be a deliverer of the Jews before God, but in the flesh. God never called him to kill him. It's not an army yet. Moses pre acted before God wanted him to act. So God's got to send him away a little, give him a little treatment, and get him a little humbled, and get him right. And when he went out the second day, this is the next day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strolled together. Now, you had an Egyptian and a Hebrew, now you got two Hebrews. And he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smiles thou thy fellow? And this is be he said, the one that did the wrong, because they're going to speak all the time. Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? What great words. That's a reference to Jesus Christ. Intends thou to kill me? As thou killest the Egyptian. Uh oh. Well how this guy knew. And Moses feared and said. Surely this thing is known. He's rejected by his brethren. At the first coming. Even at his second coming. He has. He, he takes a little work. But he's got to get him. To follow him out. And they still give him a hard time. There will be a second coming to Moses. <laughs> Now, when Pharaoh heard this thing, it got all the way to the palace. He sought to slay Moses, his grandson, his daughter's son. It makes you wonder, you know, finally I can get that male Hebrew, I wonder. Finally I can get my hands on him. I don't know. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh. He runs away and went and dwelt in the land of Midian, that is southwest of the Dead Sea, Genesis 25, 1, in the land of Edom. And he sat down by a well. Now the priests of Midian, okay, there are priest men around, people serving gods and God. But he's not a Jewish priest. He's a Gentile priest. Had seven daughters. And they came and drew. Oh man, look at that. We're two chapters into the book of Exodus and we have a woman at a well. 
Is that Jesus Christ or is that not Jesus Christ? And filled the troughs to water their father's flock. Well, Rebekah fed the flock of, of Isaac and Abraham's. And the shepherds came and drove them away. These are bad shepherds. There are some shepherds that drive people away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. All right. Chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. And here, Moses wants to do justice and help those who can't help themselves. Here's a man getting beat up by an Egyptian. I'll take care of it. Kill him. Here are shepherds who are driving these women away. They can't do what they need to do. He stands up and he fights for them. God doesn't need a fighter. I knew a preacher like that one time. Always a brawler. And that's one of the things it says not to be a brawler in 1 Timothy. Moses is a brawler. He wants to pick a fight. And when they came to Reu, in Numbers 10.29, it's going to be called Regul. This guy's got three or four names. Their father, he said, how is it that ye are come so soon to, you, you guys are home awfully early. This is not normal. This is weird. Why are you back? You didn't do your job? What's going on? And they said, an Egyptian. And when the brethren of Jacob came and said, that man of Egypt, by the clothes. They're looking, he's, Moses is out there by a well and he's dressed as an Egyptian because he's come from the palace of Pharaoh. He's wearing Egyptian clothes as Joseph would have. He's not white. He would definitely know him he's one of the Gentiles or something. But he's Jewish, he's brown, but with the Egyptian clothing, he's got to be, you know, light-skinned Egyptian. Because there are different shades of colored people. But the clothes. And there are people today that by the clothes that you wear, you make yourself stand out who you are. You look like a, you're a hussy. And you look like a prostitute. I don't even know what that is. In street ministry, we see all kinds. It's like, what? And then the lack of clothes, I guess I could say, too. Egyptians delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds. Now, they fought over this well. Like, Abraham fought over his wells. You know, there's not enough wells here. That's for our animals. Well, we need some. It'll be a battle. And also drew water enough for us. Enough for us. Nothing more, nothing less. And watered the flock. He did the work for us that day. Moses is a worker, even though he come from the palace. Jesus Christ came from the palace of all palaces of heaven and came down and worked. And he said unto his daughters, where is he? Why is it that you left him, left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. I mean, what would you leave him there for? Could bring him home and give him his hire. He helped us. We got to pay him. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. Oh, I'll stay here. Okay. He gave Moses, Zipporah, his daughter. Shall we go again? Moses has a Gentile bride, just like Jesus Christ. And she bare him a son. So between 21 and 22, it's got to be over nine months. <laughs> he bare him a son and called his name Gershom. For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And Jesus Christ was a stranger in a strange land of his own people. He came unto his own and his own received him not. They didn't even know who he was. They didn't care to know who he was. Well, 22 verses of Moses and look how well we're getting into. And it came to pass in the process of time. Time goes on. That the king of Egypt died. Okay. So. The one that did not know Joseph. 
The one that said, let's serve him with rigor. Let's give him cruel bondship. He's dead. Murder those babies. He's dead. The Pharaoh that we will deal with later is not the same Pharaoh of Exodus 1 and 2. That Pharaoh won't get right with God either. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of the body. Oh, we're done. Everything's done. Everything's going to be back to normal. Oh, thank you, Jehovah. He's dead. And they cried, and their cry came unto God by reason of the bondage. Oh, God, we're suffering. Dead. He is dead. Help us. But God said there's a timetable. There's 400 years. I want to make it so you guys will not want to go back there ever again. It don't work. And God heard their groaning. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and Jacob. It's been a long time. And God looked upon the children of Israel. And God had respect with them. And he's going to start doing the work. Now let's go to Hebrews 11.23. Hebrews 11.23, Scripture with Scripture. Let's see what the Bible has to say. 11, am I, no, I'm in 10. 11.23, I didn't think of it, right? 11.23, this is the welfare. By faith, Moses, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was his three months of his parents. His mother had faith to hide him. So God had to be working in that mother. Because they saw he was a proper child. Now remember that goodly child? Stephen said fair child. Hebrew says proper. Proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. They had faith in God over Moses. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. We didn't read about that in Exodus. I'm not your daughter. But remember he said he went to, he saw his brethren beaten. At that point we read his brethren. At that moment he said to Pharaoh's daughter, I'm Jewish. I'm Hebrew. I'm not Egyptian. That's what it meant, his brethren. Choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ's greater riches in the treasures of Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who, who is invisible. So we read that part. Let's go to Acts 7.20. Acts 7.20. We'll see what Stephen... A professor of the Bible of history. And I think that's wrong. Acts 720. In which time Moses was born and was exceedingly fair. There's that proper child. There's that fair. So there. He was a handsome young baby. That's all the. He didn't glow. He didn't have a halo. He's just, well, that's a handsome baby. That handsome, that handsome baby that cried grew the attention of Pharaoh's daughter. Ooh. I would assume. And nourished up in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. Well, his mom did. She paid for it. So she was charged for nourishing by paying the mother. And look at that. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. And was mighty in words and deed. So Moses was educated. And when he was full 40 years old. What we're going to see next is, it came into his heart to visit his brethren. They're my brethren. I'm not Egyptian. The children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong. So that guy, 
that the Egyptian was beaten. He, he was wrongly convicted and wrongly being mistreated. You want to cry foul about how you were treated in America? Well, how about how the Jews were treated in Egypt? Written by God. God written that. That's black and white. That's what God. You mistreated my people. Okay? He came unto the heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel, and seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian murder. For he had supposed his brethren, the Jews, would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them. See, I'm doing it in the name of God. You did it wrong. But I come in the name of God. You did it wrong. But they understood not. <laughs> and the next day, <laughs> He showed himself unto them as they strove, remember the two Hebrews, and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren. Why do ye wrong one another? But he that did his neighbor wrong, Exodus 2, thrust him away, get away from me, Saying, who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Stephen quotes completely what Exodus does, so we don't lose the context of Jesus Christ. Wilt thou kill me as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? And then Moses fled at the saying, and was a stranger in the land of Madian. It's just the, 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 the New Testament spelling of Midian. Where he begat two sons. We read about one so far. And when 40 years were expired, there appeared unto him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, the angel of the Lord. And we're going to read about that, Lord willing, in the next few chapters. So scripture with scripture with scripture, we got to go from all the way from the Old Testament to the in-between, the, the, the transition of the book of Acts, and then go over to Hebrews. Hebrews, written to Hebrews, to tell you the full story of the history of Moses and what a wonderful man he was but as much as a wonderful man and type of Jesus Christ that he is he's like me we're all sinners and God used him well you know God hates adulterers God hates whoremongers and that, but God can use them too Paul was killing Christians and Paul and, and, and I was like God I, guy was killing us uh, you really want me Listen, I'm, he's a vessel of my honor he's, I'm going to use him so we start out with greatness we start out with the book of Exodus again we start out with Jesus Christ and we're only just begun with Moses because Moses will tell the children of Israel that Jesus is going to be a and they even say it in the, in the gospel a prophet like unto Moses and another place they'll say, are you that prophet? What prophet's that? The one like Moses. And then you're going to see Moses and Elijah and Jesus in the gospel. And then you're going to see Moses and Elijah showing up in the tribulation period. And him and Elijah are going to have all kinds. Of, I think they're going to have fun. Watch this, Moses. Watch the drought. Drought? Nothing. Watch this. What we have left of water? Blood. Ooh, that's pretty good. Let's try it. But Moses, he had a little problem. He wanted to get justice by himself. And God had to get him away from He had to give him, give him the school of hard knocks. Settle down with sheep and lions and bears, as David would tell us. Now, if a lion or bear takes one of your sheep, you ain't going to get justice. Because David's told that. David said he had to protect his sheep from lions and bears. He has to protect... Um, got Raul's sheep. He's got to learn compassion. He's got to learn how to control that. He's, a, he's got an anger problem. Later on, we're going to see Moses. I want you to go speak to that rock for water. You guys, you just oh, you hate me. Bam. 
Moses, what? You're not going in the promised land. And when you look at that man, everything he'd done, everything he had to put up with, and you say, God, why did you have to do that? He never got over his anger. But he's a remarkable man. I'm glad we're going to be getting studying him next.